Hey friend, Chris here from MyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Well, today marks the first day in a series of videos that I've been wanting to do forever, and I'm just finally, I'm finally sitting down and doing the thing. I'm calling the series Newbie to Ninja. This is a series of videos that is designed for the beginner in mind. So maybe you're brand new to Logic Pro and you downloaded the free trial from the Apple website and you're just kind of poking around, or perhaps you purchased Logic Pro from the App Store. In either case, you're new to the application. You're feeling a little, you know, just unsure of how to get your bearings, how to get started creating whatever it is that you like to create. So that's what this series of videos is all about. I'm going to help you go from feeling like a beginner, a newbie, you know, really uncomfortable in this brand new environment to feeling very secure, comfortable, like a pro, like a ninja in Logic Pro. So in this video, we're just going to go over the steps of downloading both the trial for Logic Pro and downloading the application from the App Store itself, opening up Logic for the first time, and just showing you a couple areas that I think will be really helpful to you as a beginner. So let's dig into this. All right, so we're going to download Logic Pro for the very first time, and you can take this one of two avenues. First, I wanna bring your attention to Safari, which is down here in the dock. And I've already loaded the Apple webpage for Logic Pro. It's apple.com slash logic dash pro. If you haven't already purchased Logic Pro from the App Store, Perhaps you want to be able to try out the application before you lay down $200 US. I think that's a very reasonable thing to want. So that's why we're on the Apple webpage for Logic Pro. If you look in the upper right hand corner, there are two blue buttons. One says buy, the other says free trial. And if you click on the free trial button, this will bring you to a webpage that will tell you, hey, go ahead, try Logic Pro for free for the next 90 days. You will have access to every aspect of Logic Pro in this trial, and you just click on the download now button, and away you go. One thing to note, just in case it's not abundantly clear, you will need to own a Mac to be able to run Logic Pro. It is a Mac-only application. If after trying out Logic Pro and after this video series, you are set on owning Logic Pro and using it daily for your creative tasks, you could, of course, go up to the Buy button on the Apple webpage, or you can go to the App Store directly on your Mac. So let's do that right now. Let's quit Safari. And there's a couple different ways you can open the App Store. I personally like to use Spotlight, which is the magnifying glass in the upper right-hand corner here in the menu bar on your Mac. But for faster access, I just use Command Spacebar, and then I type in App Store. And just like that, we can pop open the App Store from Spotlight using a simple key command. Or if you prefer, you could go down to the Finder in the dock, and right at the top, we have App Store, the application section of the Finder, or you could open up Launchpad on your Mac. We you can once again go to the dock, pop open Launchpad, and open the App Store. Cool, so we're going to search for Logic Pro. Right in the upper left-hand corner in the search bar, I've typed it in and hit Return or Enter. And the result for Logic Pro will be the first one you see. And we'll click on that listing in the App Store. The Logic Pro page in the App Store will show you a lot of information if you want to take a look at any of it. And depending on whether you've already purchased Logic Pro or you have yet to purchase, you'll have a button right up here. Of course, because I purchased Logic Pro about 10 years ago, I have the option to re-download the application to my Mac. If you haven't purchased Logic Pro, you will see a button to purchase it for about 199 US. So I'm going to go ahead and download Logic Pro right now by clicking on the download button. And for my particular situation, it's going pretty quickly. We can, of course, stop the progress of the download if we so desire. One other thing to note is anytime there's a Logic Pro update, you will find that update in the App Store, typically under the Updates tab right here on the left-hand side, or by going to the Logic Pro page in the App Store where you should see a button to update. All right, now that Logic Pro has been downloaded to my Mac, we can open the application from the App Store by clicking on the Open button. Or, once again, if we close the App Store, we can go into the Finder, which is right down here in the dock, or you can go right up here and you can go to File and open a new Finder window. And we can find Logic Pro in the application section of the Finder and double click to open the application, or you can go to Launchpad. You can see Logic Pro in the bottom right hand side in my Launchpad. You might have to scan a couple pages to find yours. Or once again, we can go to Spotlight and type in Logic Pro. I'll close these finder windows and let's pop open the application for the very first time. The first thing you should be greeted by is a welcome dialogue that's offering you two different paths you can take into Logic Pro. 
If you've been using GarageBand for a while, simplified mode might help you feel more at home in the application, but the compromise there is that a lot of the advanced features and functions of Logic Pro will be hidden away from you. Or you can open up Logic Pro in complete mode. The name says it all. With complete mode, you will have access to every feature and function of the application. The only compromise there is, is that you might be a little overwhelmed by everything that's available to you. And look at that. Before we can even make our choice, our Mac wants to let us know that Logic Pro is trying to install instruments and sounds that we can use in the application. Of course, my plan is to download all of the available sound content and instruments, but let's press cancel for now just to see what happens. Okay, as we can see, because I canceled the download, the essential sounds and settings for Logic Pro have been canceled before they've been completed, which means that some features of the application won't be available to us. But we can resume the installation later, which will be the second video in the series. Let's press OK once again. Next on our journey into the application is a dialogue that tells us what's new in Logic Pro at this time. At the time of this video, the most recent version of Logic is 10.7.6, and these are four of the most recent updates to the application in the last few months. You can click on this link to open the complete feature list in your web browser, but we're just gonna continue. All right, and now we get to choose a project, and we have a lot of different options to choose from. First, we could start with a brand new empty project, which there are two variations. Either we could start with just a brand new empty project, which will bring us into the tracks area in Logic Pro so we can start to lay down creative ideas in a chronological or linear order. So maybe you have the drums first and then the guitars come in and then an Apple loop, or we can open up a brand new empty Live Loops grid. Live Loops is a more non-linear style of production, meaning that you don't have to lay down creative ideas in a chronological order. So you don't have to start with anything. You could just throw your ideas against the wall and then be able to click on different loops in the grid and have them play back in time with other loops anywhere else in the grid. Next, you could choose to open one of your most recent projects. Next, we have starter grids, which comes with preloaded audio for you to use and be creative with. And as you can see, as I hover my mouse over each starter grid, an arrow icon is being shown to us because we have to download this content to our Mac to open these projects. So once again, I'm going to cancel the download for now. And as we keep hovering and clicking on each one, we can see there's quite a bit of opportunities to check out different styles of music and try them out. After that, we have included tutorials for specific functions of Logic Pro if you wanna get more familiar with them. There are demo projects you can try out both in stereo and in Atmos. And there are also pre-made project templates that you can load for various styles of music and production that will put you on the fast track to get started creating and making music. So I'm gonna click on new project, empty project, and click on choose. Next, we have the new tracks dialog that offers us the opportunity to load one of four different track types in this version of the new tracks dialog. You can load a software instrument, which is an instrument that you load in Logic Pro, and you can play this instrument using the musical typing in the application or with a connected USB controller, such as a drum pad or keyboard. We can load an audio track, which will allow us to record using a microphone connected to our Mac or through an audio interface, or we can load a guitar or bass track. This will allow you to record your guitar or bass that's connected to an audio interface to your Mac through Logic's own stomp boxes and amp models. Or you can load a drummer track, which is your own personal virtual drum player that will play anything from rock based drums to that of electronic or hip hop beats to even Latin percussion. For today's video, we're just going to load an audio track. And finally, we are in Logic Pro and we can begin recording if we want to. Again, if you've been using GarageBand for a while, you're probably pretty familiar with the layout and the look of the application. Buttons like mute and solo, record enable and input monitoring look just like the buttons in GarageBand. Of course, if you're not familiar with these, you will be through this series. The last two things I wanna leave with you for today's video is number one, the simplified or complete mode. At the moment, we're looking at the simplified mode, which you can tell right in the upper right hand corner here, it actually says simplified mode. And like I pointed out, much of the look of Logic Pro is looking like GarageBand. If we start to open up some of the menus across the application, we're gonna see they're pretty concise in terms of what they offer. But if we click on simplified mode in the upper right hand corner, this brings us to the advanced settings, which you can find right up here under Logic Pro, Settings, Advanced. And you have the option to work either with the simplified mode of Logic Pro, which is again, you know, simpler view, but the compromise is, is you don't have access to all of the features because some have been hidden away, or you can enable the complete features, which I recommend that you do because there's so much awesome stuff hiding under the hood. 
And just like that, we've seen a little bit of a change in the application. The Logic Pro settings are global settings, so you just set this once and you're good to go. Let's close the advanced settings. And the last thing I wanna to bring to your attention today is a feature that I think gets overlooked a lot, and that is the Quick Help feature. You can open the Quick Help option by going to this question mark in the upper left-hand corner in what is called the control bar. And if we click on that, we get a floating window. It's the Quick Help window. And now anything that you hover your mouse over, this floating window will tell you what it is that you are hovering over. So we can see right now that I'm hovering over the show hide automation function. So we get a little description of this function. We can see that it shows controls used to create or edit automation. But if you need more information about this function, you can use the key command, command forward slash, and this will open up the Logic Pro menu right to that particular function with more information for you. And there are three different views for Quick Help. So if we go up to Help, we can choose to have Quick Help appear as either the floating window that we see. You might find that this can get in the way a little bit. So we can also choose to have bubbles at the pointer location. So now we just have this window pop up anywhere we hover our mouse, which can be helpful, but I find that kind of distracting. So if we go back to help, quick help appears as an inspector pane, which is my preference. If we click on that, if we open quick help, we can see it's popping out. So let's close it up. But if we click on this I button in a circle, this will open up the inspector. And if we open the quick help option, let's close it up, make sure that this is appearing as an inspector pane. And there we have it. Now, anytime you hover your mouse over a function, you'll see a short description for that function on the left-hand side of Logic Pro in what is called the inspector. I just find this view of Quick Help a little less distracting when I'm working in a project. All right, we've covered a lot of details when it comes to downloading and opening up Logic for the first time and getting just a little bit familiar with the application. In the second video of this series, we are going to download and manage the sound library content that comes with Logic Pro because there's a lot of sounds and instruments that you can use for your projects. I'll see you tomorrow in this Newbie to Ninja series.